I shall want to begin the lesson by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shah, Waharaka Kadash, which in the ancient Hebrew tongue would be the correct names of the Heavenly Father, His beloved Son, and the Holy Spirit. Also, would like to give double honors to my teachers, the head apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Much due honors and respect to the sense of brethren out there that's also laboring in his work. And as always, want to say shalom to the believers, you know, the Akim as well as the Aquath, which will be you brothers along with the sisters that subscribe to this truth as well. So, yeah, I just wanted to go into another quick lesson, which before we get started, I just wanted to throw this out there. This is not for the faint-hearted and certainly not for the casual Israelite. No, this is only reserved for the serious-minded amongst you listeners out there, those of you who truly understand the power in which you're dealing with and ultimately understand the power that lies within this word. Matter of fact, let's start off right there in the book of Ecclesiastes. The eighth chapter in the fourth verse, it says, Where the word of a king is, there is power. <laughs> and who may say unto him, What doest thou? Yeah, let's read this again. It says, Where the word of a king is, there is power. Yeah, and who would this king be? Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. And where would his word be found? Within the Holy Scriptures, which, when conveyed properly and broken down properly, has a certain power that comes with it. All right, when you come under the correct names of the true powers of all heavens and earth, Yahweh, why Yahweh Shah in the Hebrew tongue, there's a power that comes with that, which, by the way, the Hebrew language is the language of the heavens. So this word, which is a decree, not only governs the things that happen here on the planet Earth, but in the heavens as well. This word not only piques the interest of the inhabitants of the planet Earth, starting with the elect, but the angels and demons as well, stand in awe at the words of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. Matter of fact, let's prove that before we continue. This is the book of First Peter, the first chapter. And starting at the 10th verse, it says, Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied, of the grace that shall come unto you. Yeah, in the scriptures, when read with understanding, you will see that it's pretty much a build up to this very moment. This would be the appointed time, if you will, for the Lord's grace to go forth. This is the time where the Lord chose to extend somewhat of a peace offering, if you will, to the nation of Israel, which will only be honored by his elect. See, again, it says, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesy of the grace that shall come unto you, searching what or what manner of time, see, again, which this would be the times and season where the Lord chose to visit us, you know, and, and send forth his mercy in the form of his word. See, searching what or what manner of time the spirit of Hamashiach, which was in them, did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Hamashiach and the glory that shall follow, unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, yeah, meaning the prophets of old, they didn't understand the breakdowns. They conveyed the message, yet they didn't understand the full breakdown. For an example, when you consider John, all right, whom historians refer to as the revelator, well, he reported Revelation, the 13th chapter in the 16th verse concerning the mark of the beast, but he couldn't break it down with certainty. You know, he didn't know about this technology, the technology of this day. He didn't know about cell phones and laptops and desktops and computers, right? He reported it, but the breakdown wasn't revealed to him in that lifetime. Again, it says, unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us. See, so this is the time where the Lord is revealing the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. See that? Again, <clears throat> unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us. See, they did minister the things which are now reported unto you. See, so they wrote the scriptures, if you will. They scribed the prophecies, and we are now reporting them to you in this lifetime. All right, this is the time where the Lord will break down the mysteries. 
unto his elect, see, which are now reported unto you by them, see, that have preached the gospel unto you. And that's concerning the men that you see who have been thrust out there, you know, on the front lines, pushing forth this word. See, again, by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Spirit sent down from heaven, which is the understanding. And this is the point right here. It says, which things the angels desire to look into. See, which things the angels <laughs> desire to look unto. So this proves that this word, which again is a decree from the heavenly father himself, not only governs the things that take place here on the planet earth, but it also governs the things in the heavens. All right, so this word has power, not only here in the earthly realm, but the spiritual realm as well. And that's what I wanted to touch on in this lesson. All right, which brings me right here To the book of Mark, the third chapter, and starting at the 14th verse, it says, And he ordained twelve that they should be with him. Yeah, and this is concerning the beginning of our Lord's ministry, where he chose twelve and ordained them that they should be with him, which the overtone of that is that these men would be in harmony with our Lord Yahweh Shah. They would be of one mind. They would be in accord, if you will, being that these men would be the very joint heirs to this inheritance that we read about all right again and he ordained 12 that they should be with him and that he might send them forth to preach see and that he might send them forth to preach now when our lord sent forth these 12 he didn't send them empty-handed man they was given certain power all right and as you read on, you're going to see that it says, and to have power, see, so he sent them forth to preach and to have power to heal sickness and to cast out devils. Yeah, let's read this again. And to have power to heal sickness, which this sickness right here is spiritual. All right. For each and every individual who came into the fold where your sickness was healed, you was cleaned by the word, and that's pursuant to the book of St. John, the 15th chapter, in the third verse. So when the scripture say the Lord will uh, give us power to heal sickness, well, 2,000 years ago, there's accounts of the disciples actually healing the sick. But here in this lifetime, it starts spiritually. We're healing the sick every time we, we convey this word to a potential, you know, member of the Lord's elect. And they come into this thing, they believe and cleave on this word, this doctrine, and make this truth their refuge, then that's us healing the sick. All right? Matter of fact, let's prove this real quick. We're going to go back. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 107. In verse 20, it says, He sent his word and healed them. See, he sent his word and and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. So this is pretty much the chronological order. Before you are physically delivered from this destruction, the Lord will send forth his word and heal you. See? So when the scripture speaks about the Lord giving his men power to heal the sick, well, this has a spiritual overtone to it. All right, men and those of you who heard this word, when conveyed, you believed on it then at that point you was healed. Now this doesn't mean that there won't be physical miracles, all right? You're gonna have situations where brothers will heal, you know, the sick in a show of, uh, you know, signifying the power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh being within that particular brother, right? But this is ultimately dealing with spiritually. We have been given power to heal the sick in the form of giving you this word which serves as somewhat of an ointment, man, to heal those wounds. See that? So when you go back here again to the book of Mark, the third chapter, and again, starting at the 14th verse, and he ordained 12 that they should be with him and that he might send them forth to preach and to have power to heal sicknesses. And again, this is on display by way of this word going forth. This is how Yahweh Bashem Yahweh chose to heal us by giving us this word. 
Again, you got to remember we read in the book of Psalms, chapter 107 and verse 20, how the Lord sent forth his word and healed them. See? So you have men that would be here on the planet Earth that would be carriers of that word and who would be given power to accomplish this feat of healing the sick. Again, it says, and to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out devils <laughs> and to cast out devils. So not only was we given power to heal the sick, which again comes by way of this word going forth, but also to cast out devils. All right. That power was given us from our Lord, Yahweh Shah. And these devils would be unclean spirits. All right. Demons. The Lord gave us power over these spirits. And again, we are dealing with a parallel of two worlds. All right. You have the physical realm, the earthly realm, and the spiritual realm, man, which the Lord gave us power over the devils and demons in this realm. All right. Every time we teach, you know, the downfall of America, we chant down this place, Babylon, and it happens. All right. Well, that's the Lord giving us power over devils, man, in the earthly realm. But this also applies to the spiritual realm. And this can be proven when you go right here to the book of Luke. The ninth chapter in the first verse it says then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power see and gave them power and authority over all devils see over all <laughs> devils see that real quick let's click on this word all Strong's G 3956 Pass. Pass. Yeah, and that would be the pronunciation in the Greek for this word all. And it says individually, each, every, any, all, <laughs> the whole, every one, all things. See that? All things. Everything. So again, when the scriptures say that the Lord have given us power and authority over all devils, it means just what it says, man. All right, each and every spiritual being, every demon and devil from the demons that roam here in the earthly realm, which, by the way, you have demons that come in the form of people. And that can be proven by the account where our Lord rebukes Satan in the form of Peter. And you also have demons, you know, in the spiritual realm, you know, high level demons that have the ability to tap into your dreams. You have sleep paralysis. All right, they have access to pipeline to tap into your mind. All right, well, guess what? The Lord gave us power over all of these demons, man. And that power is cemented by way of this word, this truth, which again is a decree from the Heavenly Father Himself, which the words of Yahweh Bashim and Hawashah trumps any and every power. So if you have access to that word, then this means the Lord has given you power over demons, man over unclean spirits. And again, it's by way of this word, all right? This is how you combat all demons, from the low-level demon to the spiritual being demon, Satan himself, man. And that's actually written in the scriptures where the spiritual being Satan tempted our Lord, Yahweh Shai, and how did he combat the devil? By way of the scriptures, man, see? So the Lord gave us power over the demons by way of, of this word, see? And that can be proven when you go right here. To the book of Luke, the 10th chapter. And starting at the 16th verse, it says, He that heareth you, heareth me, and he that despise of you, despise of me. Yeah, and this proves again that there will be men here on the planet Earth that will be carriers, if you will, of the words of our Lord. And for those of you who hear those men and that report that they bring, then this will mean that you hear our Lord Yahweh Shah. But for those of you who despise those men, this will actually mean you despise our Lord, which ultimately means you despise the very one who sent him, which will be the Heavenly Father himself. Again, he that heareth you, heareth me, and he that despise of you, despise of me, and he that despise of me, despise of him that sent me. So that's the chain of command, if you will. And what you're going to find out, there's a certain rank and file, <laughs> all right? 
with the heavenly father, his son, the angels, as well as the demons, man. See? Now, what we read right here is our Lord again sending forth his disciples. You know, which when you read in the book of Matthew, the 10th chapter and the fifth verse on down, our Lord gives his men explicit instructions, if you will, on how to go forth and, you know, proceed and further with preaching the doctrine, preaching the kingdom of heaven. All right. Now, that was a time where those men whom the Lord sent forth, they actually returned <laughs> and they returned to our Lord with a report. And it tells you that right here in the 17th verse, it says, and the 70 returned, see, and the 70 returned after our Lord sent them forth to preach this gospel. They returned. It says again with joy saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Let's read this again. And the 70 return again with joy saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Now, when you go into this word subject, that's a compound word. The word sub meaning under. That's where you get the word submerge and the word ject going back to rule, which when you put the words together, sub inject, it literally means under rule. <laughs> All right. So the scriptures say that the disciples return to the Lord with the report that the devils are subject or under the rule of them through his name. Now, obviously, the name of our Lord starts with the physical names, you know, Yahweh, why Yahweh Shah. But there's a reason why the devils subjected themselves to the disciples who came in the name of our Lord, Yahweh Shah. And to get a better understanding of that, let's click on this word name. Strong's G, 3686, Anima, Anima. Yeah, and that would be the pronunciation in the Greek for this word name. And it says the name is used for everything which the name covers. <laughs> everything, the thought or feeling of which is aroused in the mind by mentioning, hearing, remembering <laughs> the name, i.e. for one's rank, authority. See that? For one's rank, authority. So when the disciples return with the report that even the devils are subject unto us through thy name, well, that has everything to do with authority and rank. That's why the scripture says that our Lord was given a name above any other name, which in the heavens, you actually have a rank and file as well. Obviously, you have the Most High, Yahweh. And you have his second in command, if you will, which will be our Lord, Yahweh Shah, who have been given power and jurisdiction over all things. And this includes whatever entity here on the planet Earth or in the heavens. Well, guess what? If you are carriers of the words of that power, that authority, Yahweh Shah, then guess what? You have now been given jurisdiction and power over everything as well, man. <laughs> all right. And this includes unclean spirits which comes in the form of these demons. And that's all an effort to contribute to preserving you until the day of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, and his return. So y'all yeah, just wanted to go into that, Lord willing, it was edifying. Till the next time I say, Shalom.